everybody, welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here. In today's video, we're going to demo out AstroPixel Processor. This awesome program will stack, calibrate, register uh, your images, as well as do the stretching of the data and some minor corrections here and there. I still think it's best to finish them up in Photoshop, but this is an excellent tool, very simple to use interface. And I'm just going to show you how that works right now. So first thing we're going to do is load our working directory. So let's start there. And there it is. All right. As you can see here, this is all numbered out so you know what comes next and what to do. You know, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Tab number one, you're going to load your light frames. In my case, since I only do lights, flats, and bias, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So loading all of these. It's just that simple. And it's going to ask you um, if you used multi, if you want to activate multi-channel mode. Which, since I used the DSLR, I don't want to need to do that. And this was just one session, so I don't need to do that as well. So hit cancel. All right, those frames are loaded. Now for the flat frames, and I've actually just put that in another directory. And those are loaded and then the bias frames okay I've got all those loaded now to go to step two calibration and really I just left all this alone um, on its default settings and I've gotten really good results with it you can probably tweak this stuff if you know what you're doing uh, but with what it has set up as default has worked good for me. So um, I do two iterations of Kappa. Okay, iteration there of Kappa. All right, everything else I pretty much leave as is on this. So what we're going to do is create masters and assign the lights. And this will take this will take some time. Um, I will say this: this program, these, some of these processes, depending on how many flats and bias and dark flats and light frames you're using, is is going to dictate how long this takes. I mean, it's usually each step's usually anywhere between five ten minutes, depending on the speed of your computer and how much data you're working with, the size of your data, that sort of thing. So, all right, so we have calibrated the frames. That process is completed. We've uh, created masters and assigned to the lights. Next step we want to do is analyze the stars. And this is really just a click through process like this, guys. It's we'll register, normalize, integrate and then you'll have a stacked image and then you'll have another set of tools here under tab 9 um, which it's not revealing at the moment I guess because it's processing this but we'll, we'll go over that and this again this step will take another you know five five minutes or so to complete alright so the next step we're gonna do here now that we just finished up calibrating is analyzing stars doing a star detection so you click that tab and again another couple minutes doesn't take too long okay that step has now been okay we've analyzed the stars and that frame as you do this um, all your frames that you have loaded show up down here in this this menu bar down here Right, now we want to register and again on this one I just leave everything on default guys start registration and you guessed it actually this one goes by pretty quickly so that's been registered we're gonna save registered for, actually all right, so those have been registered. Let's go to normalize. And this will take a few minutes. 
Okay, we've normalized all the frames. Right here, these are all the things you've done to it. Calibration, star, registration, normalize. So we just did that. Now we're going to integrate the frames. I just leave these on default once again. There's, there's a lot that you can do here. I'm still learning, but you don't need to know every little tweak that you can do in this program to get good results out of the box. And that's what I wanted to show you guys here today. We're going to do two iterations, though, of the Kappa, just to make sure any outliers are rejected. All right, everything else looks good. Let's go ahead and integrate. All right, guys, we have run the integration on this. And there is the integrated file. Let's see what we got here. And there it is. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm, I'm pretty impressed there. Um, so now what you want to do is go to your Tools tab, Batch Modify, and this is just cropping it to your liking. So yep, we want to modify that current image. We're going to draw a square, rectangle, what have you. Um, I think that's probably going to be about good. So let's do that there. Go down to Crop OK. Format TIFF, sRGB workspace, and 16 bits. That is now here. See, at each step you go through, you can always backtrack to the previous step. That's what I like about this, too. It saves every step along the way. All right, so now let's flip this thing around. I feel like the seagull is flying upside down or something. So we're going to rotate this 180 degrees. And that's my five-year-old in the background. Okay, son, hold on. Daddy's recording a tutorial right now. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see that flipped around. Okay, so this is. We are right here. Okay, so we are right here in this process. I just rotated it. Now we're going to look at correcting vignetting. I don't see a horrible amount of vignetting, uh, but we'll. There's a little bit here, maybe. I mean, it looks pretty evenly lit, honestly. I'm, I'm going to skip this. No, no, I cancel. Let's go back to that image. Remove light pollution. I love this little feature here. This is so awesome. Check this out. You just click here, yes, and you draw five areas that have, now I can tell here, anywhere that doesn't have nebula, I'm going to be working on. So, I mean, this little green, little off color here, you want at least five selections. I'll do many more. And here. All right, that should be good. And then go to Calculate. Doesn't take long. And in a few seconds, bam, look at that. The red ones are areas it could not use. Yellow ones are questionable, but I mean still overall here. That cleaned up the vignetting. I'm sorry, that cleaned up the light pollution and gradients beautifully. Nowhere in Photoshop can you do this with just one click. I mean, you do have Gradient Exterminator, which is a great tool. Sometimes it doesn't always get it quite right. And this, they do a fantastic job. Whatever algorithm they're using in Astro Pixel Processor, it just works. So we're going to click OK and save on this. And just hit OK. Same thing. I don't know why it makes you choose the workspace and everything every time but all right now we're here this step all right so now we want to calibrate the background 
Same thing, so we're going to draw four boxes. Some darker areas right there. So let's calculate that. Okay, that's calibrated the background. Now we're going to calibrate star colors. Yes. So we're just going to choose an area that's got various stars. This looks good here. And click calculate. Okay, star colors have been calculated. I'm going to click OK and save. Not quite sure what this graph means yet. <laughs> um, I guess you can move it to adjust. And you can move the sliders here to adjust as well. But I like that. I think that, that's good there. We'll go with that. Hit OK and save. Now we move on to the fun side over here, stretching. Now, first thing you're going to want to do before you start playing with these sliders, otherwise it does massive changes and you will not be able to figure out. It's just ridiculous <laughs> where where you made the change, how much you made the change. So changes to oops, wrong way. Three, four. All of these to three, four. Three, four three four so when you make these changes they're a lot smaller okay so we got this on stretch uh, for instance like if you drag this this way a little bit you know the, ch the change is minor depending on how much you drag it that brighten it up a little let's go back some a little more and you've got these pre-programmed stretches in here let's go to this one maybe a little little too much bring it back Try this one. And here's the most aggressive. It stretches the stew out of it, but as you can see, it just just blows out everything. I'm thinking this right here looks about right for me. And you, again, you can make little tweaks these sliders sharpness sharpness and stuff like that I'll do in Photoshop but really all this is about where I leave it so this is where I'd finish in astral pixel processor I know there's more you can do here this wasn't exhaustive but this is just to show you if you're if you're fairly new into this hobby you're trying to find a software that's pretty much just a click away from you know moving from one step to the next and getting these images processed I can't think of an easier program I mean to even get it to this point uh, in Photoshop would take so much more work well guys that concludes our video for the evening if you enjoyed it felt like you got something out of it please hit the like button and subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and until next time clear skies